Welcome back to Lighting Design 101 with your instructor, Denise Remping. I am Denise Remping. Come to bring you another lesson about basic lighting fundamentals and theory. This video is going to be about the hang and focus. You can't use your lights if you don't have them hung up and pointing in the right direction. So that is what I'm going to cover today. A hang refers to the process of hanging and placing your lighting instruments where you need them. A focus refers to the process of aiming your lights where you need them and adjusting the settings, such as focusing the edges of your beam, adding color or gobos, adjusting the shape of your light, and so on. Before we begin, let me cover what you are going to need to accomplish a proper hang and focus. First of all, you will need a pair of good work gloves. As I mentioned in the previous video, lighting instruments can get very hot, especially if they are housing halogen lamps. To avoid burns, a pair of work gloves is necessary. You can find a decent pair of work gloves at any store that sells hardware, lumber, plumbing, etc., or you can purchase them online. Make sure they are big enough to fit snugly yet comfortably on your hands. Too small and they will limit your movements. Too big and they will get in the way and make for clumsy work. The next thing you will need is a decent crescent wrench. I recommend an adjustable wrench as you will be dealing with nuts and bolts of all different sizes. The third thing you will need then is a way to secure your wrench. You can purchase a tool leash or tool lanyard at most stores that sell hardware, lumber, plumbing, etc. Or you can purchase one online. But in a pinch, a basic safety cable can be used as well. I will explain what a safety cable is in just a bit. The reason you want to use a tool leash is so you do not drop your wrench, or rather, if you do, and you most likely will, you can retrieve it easily. When working on lights, you will quite often find yourself in very high places, and dropping a wrench can mean, at the very least, having to climb up and down a ladder or stairs several times. But at the very worst, it could cause property damage, or worse yet, bodily injury to someone else. Next, you will need the lighting instruments you are going to hang and focus, and we will talk more about what instruments to use and where in later videos. And finally, you will need a safety cable for each instrument you are going to hang. A safety cable is a length of airline cable with a carabiner on one end and a loop on the other. The purpose of a safety cable is to prevent an instrument from falling in case a bolt gives out. There are two reasons you do not want an instrument to fall. Reason number one, lighting instruments are very expensive. We are talking hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars, and none of them are designed to survive a fall without taking on damage. And reason number two, the biggest reason to use a safety cable, to prevent an instrument from falling on someone's head. Whether this be an audience member, an actor, or a stagehand, being struck by a falling stage light is going to cause serious injury, if not death. So it is extremely important that you cable every single light you hang. Before we go into how to properly hang a light, let's discuss the parts of the instrument that will be important for you to know. First of all, in order to hang a light, an instrument is going to need a yoke, and almost always a C-clamp. The yoke is the U-shaped framework that holds the instrument. It is usually affixed to the light at two points, providing a single axis of rotation. To adjust this axis, you may need to use your wrench on one or both sides of the yoke to loosen or tighten the instrument. However, this instrument has provided a convenient handle that allows you to adjust it without the use of a tool. The base of the yoke is then secured to the C-clamp, which provides a secondary axis of rotation. Both these axes then allow you to adjust your light both vertically and horizontally. Or for your real nerds out there like myself, they allow for panning and tilting. The C-clamp is a C-shaped hook with a threaded edge, which allows you to secure your instrument to a pipe or batten or other fixed structure. There are three important bolts on the C-clamp. The clamp bolt is long and is used to secure your clamp onto your fixed structure. The yoke bolt connects the clamp to the yoke. 
you loosen this bolt to allow for rotation of the yoke. The pan bolt is a small bolt that holds the C-clamp together. This bolt can also be referred to as the safety bolt because it can become a safety hazard if it is not tightened. If this bolt gives out, your light will fall. Thankfully, you will have your safety cable in place so it will not fall far. To hang your light, wrap the C-clamp around the pipe or other fixed surface and tighten the clamp bolt until it is secure. While you are securing the clamp, you should always keep one hand on the yoke to prevent the light from falling. If you are unable to do this, then ask someone else to hold the light for you. Do not remove your hand until you are certain the light is secure. Then you should immediately slip your safety cable through the yoke and around the pipe. From here, you can focus your light where you need it. Many lights you will hang will require the yoke to hang straight down from the pipe or batten. This is sort of a neutral position. In most cases, then, you will not need to tighten the yoke bolt very much. In fact, I recommend keeping that bolt loose enough to easily turn the yoke as needed. In some cases, you will need to crank the yoke out at an angle. In these cases, you will want your yoke bolt tight to prevent slipping. Once you have your light hung, you will need to plug it in. In this case, the instrument has a three-pin plug. You will see that the light is being plugged into circuit number two. This is the address of the instrument. Knowing the address of each of your instruments is going to be important for working with your light board, but we will discuss this further in the next video. You will want to turn your light on before focusing it. This is why it is better to hang and focus lights with a partner. The second person can control the lights, turn them on and off, and can be positioned to see the light better from an audience perspective. It can be difficult to tell if the light is in the correct spot when you are up on a ladder or in the catwalk. Your secondary person may have to sit in the control booth unless a remote for your light board is provided. If there is a remote, then I recommend they sit in the house. Once you have your light on, again, don't forget your gloves because your instrument is about to get very hot, you can place the light where you need it. When working with an ellipsoidal, as you can see here, you will first want to remove any color or gobos and make sure all your shutters are pulled all the way out. Again, you have two axes of rotation, your horizontal, or pan, and your vertical, or tilt. Use these to set your light where you need it. Generally speaking, you can place the hot spot or the center of the beam in the center of the area you wish to cover. Otherwise, another handy method is to have an actor or crew member stand in the center of your lighting area and then aim the hot spot to hit their chest. If you use this method, try to find someone who is of average height and not overly short or overly tall. When you have your lights set, then you can adjust any additional attributes. For example, with the ellipsoidal, you can adjust the barrel to sharpen or soften your edges. You can adjust your shutters to cut out unwanted space on stage or tighten the size of your light. You can add a gel to provide color, or you can add a gobo to create texture. Other instruments have different features to adjust as well. A Fresnel or Par can have color holders for adding gels for color, like the ellipsoidals. LED color changing lights change their color using your light board. Accessories can be used to adjust lights as well. For example, a barn door can be used with a Fresnel or Par can to adjust the shape of your light. A top hat can also tighten your shape. Or you can purchase apertures that provide irises that can make your light bigger or smaller. There is a variety of different accessories you can purchase for lighting instruments, and I recommend spending some time exploring the internet for what is out there. Some of them are very, very cool. All of these features are adjusted and set during a hang and focus. Although you may have to make further adjustments, rehang a light, or hang a whole new light later on, the purpose of the hang and focus is to set as many of your lights as you can where you need them prior to programming. We will discuss programming lights in future videos. 
At the very least, you can use your hang and focus to set your lights for a simple full stage coverage. Even if your lighting requirements are just lights on, lights off, you still want all of your actors to be seen. We will discuss where to hang your lights and how to achieve an effective full stage coverage in a later video. For now, that is the basics of a hang and focus session. This process may only take a few hours, but depending on your auditorium or theater, where the lights are already set, how many lights you need, and how much help you have, it could take several days. It is important, then, to plan accordingly.